It's not just of historical interest. It is an important moment in history which has lots of lessons for today. You see, because we must avoid schemas. I, I'll, put, I'll put forward to you a nice, simple schema. There's a crisis of capitalism. There's class struggle. A left wing develops within the mass organizations. The Trotskyists intervene. Build a Marxist tendency from that left wing. And then everybody lives happily ever after. It doesn't, it's not like that. Uh, we're Marxists. And we look at the real processes. And it's not a linear process. It's not a nice, simple schema. Because there's dangers involved in imposing a schema on reality. Now, what was happening before 1969 in Italy? Well, from 1948 to 1970, uh, roughly, to 68, let's say, the percentage of workers organized in trade unions went from over 50% in 1948 to 32% in 1968. The Communist Party had been getting older. And the number of workers in the party had been going down. I have all the statistics by age group, social composition. I'm not going to quote them here. But what you could see is a generation which joined in 48 stayed. Most, most of them stayed. The most radical ones left. And there weren't that many joining after that. So by the time you get to the 60s, you had a situation like this. The older workers complained about the youth, that they were apolitical, only interested in uh, rock music and the new jeans style and the t-shirts, you know, not interested in politics. That's the situation before. You recognize that, don't you? Yeah. But then, in the mid-60s, Claudio's given the details, a radicalization began amongst the youth. Among the students and the youth. In the labor movement, everything seemed under control. The main unions controlled the movement. The Communist Party was, was holding back uh, the, the, the youth. What happened to the communist youth, the youth section of the Italian Communist Party? Well, it, exactly the opposite to what that schema says, you know, the masses come in to the party. Well, the opposite happened. There's a word we've used in the past. It's called exitism. <laughs> Practiced by the radicalized youth and the radicalized workers. Between 1968 and 1970, the Young Communist League lost half of its members. 
It started with 150,000 and lost half of those. Where did they go? They went to the sects. Does that fit with the schema? It doesn't, does it? Avanguardia Operaia. Workers' Vanguard. Claudio referred to. A small split of 100 from the Mandalites in 1968. Becomes an organization of 8,000 by 1977. Lotta Continua had many Catholics in, in the early days, radicalized Catholic youth. Became an organization of 10,000. There was a split from the Communist Party, the Manifesto, in 1969, which had about 100,000 supporters in the party. They split to the left. At one point in Italy in the 70s, there were five daily left-wing newspapers. One of them was Lotta Continua. The other one was the uh, Workers' Daily, which was the, the paper of the Avanguardia Operaia. In many areas, there were actually good relations between the sectarians and the Communist Party branches. It's false to think that there was an, a, a total separation. I rec one, of, one of the very first recruits I made in 1977 was a young socialist who had been in Lotta Continua. His brother also. His father had been a partisan in the Second World War. His name is in, is in a big thick book which has all the court, the trials against communists and uh, partisans under the fascist regime. His father was a communist through and through. When his two boys joined Lotta Continua, he was so happy. He didn't say, oh, you're joining a sect. He was happy that they were getting involved in communist po politics. We have a comrade, he's not active now, in Sic from Sicily. He said, the Lotta Continua branch didn't have a, a, a headquarters. They used the local Communist Party headquarters. And the old party people loved having these young kids in their branch. So there was a massive explosion of the sects. Claudio said 30,000 active. You can't really say exactly how many. But in 1977, they organized a demonstration of 100,000. The sects, the insignificant sects on the margins of the labor movement. Have you heard that one before? But the process Claudio described of the eruption of the factory councils leads to a shift in the trade unions. What is the role of the trade union bureaucracy in bourgeois society? It's to police the working class for the bourgeoisie. The problem is, if you have lost control of the movement, how can you police it? To police it, they were forced to adopt many of the demands of the workers. And therefore, the trade union leaders began to move to the left in words. And then, initially, 
that radicalization, which was expressed outside the trade unions. There's a lot of discussion about this today. But this is a historical fact. Those factory councils were built in opposition to the trade union bureaucracy. Because it was stifling, trying to hold the workers back. But this is where the sects don't understand. This is what they don't understand. You can have the expression of this radicalization in the initial stages outside the mass organizations. But inevitably, it's going to impact on the mass organizations at a certain point. And that's what happened. The trade unions, in words, shifted to the left. They declared the factory councils the rank and file structures of the unions. And then the masses started to flow into the trade unions. From, from about 32%, over 50% of the workforce was in the unions by 1977. Almost a doubling of the trade union strength. And this again, the sects couldn't understand. Combined with this growth in the trade unions was the growth of the Communist Party. What happened to the Young Communist League after 1970? It doubled its membership to 150,000 again. The Communist Party was growing by 80 to 100,000 a year. The sects couldn't understand that the radicalization which begins with an advanced layer, once it spreads to the masses, it expresses itself in a different way. And it began to express itself through the trade unions and the Communist Party, which were both massively strengthened by this movement. And those big sects, you know, I attended a demonstration in 1977. It was the first week I'd arrived in Italy. And I arrived just in the right place for that demonstration, in Bologna. There was a demonstration of 100,000 youth organized by the sects. And they organized it in Bologna. For a reason. It was the heartland of the Italian Communist Party. They were going to show the Communist Party their strength. What a tragedy. I was sitting in the basketball stadium of Bologna with about 12,000 of these youth watching a spectacle. The sects smashing each other to pieces. Not verbally. They picked up the chairs and started hitting each other. I was sitting there and I was like, Lotta continua against avanguardia operaia. Oh, I forgot autonomia operaia, which is another massive sect. There was plenty to choose from in Italy. Attacking, they, would, they accused Lotta Contino of being Trotskyists, of course, that they weren't, because the autonomy of Perai consider themselves more true, true, genuine Stalinists. And then one of the smaller sects, I think they only had about two or three thousand members, they tried to protect the other sects from each other by forming a human uh, uh, barrier. This was the end of the sects. Instead of being the point of the, where they showed their strength, the potential was there. The demonstration was very big. What they had not understood, they had the perspective that the Communist Party is growing. Yes. 
but it will soon be exposed. And once it's exposed, they will come to us. And unfortunately, they didn't. And that was the end of the sects. They collapsed and disappeared, many of them. Lotta Continua, from a daily paper, completely disappeared from the scene. And many of the others uh, either disappeared or were reduced to small groups and eventually um, died. Now, the tragedy of this situation, look at the potential. If the sex could organize a demonstration of 100,000, imagine if instead of being 10, 15, I don't know how many there were, there were so many varieties of sects. And some of them serious, like Avanguardia Operaia. They had many workers. That's another schema, isn't it? Oh, the sects. Students. It just is not true. Those sects had many workers. Industrial workers, shop stewards. Fighting shop stewards. But they miseducated their members. But imagine if they'd been organized as one tendency with 100,000 turning to the Communist Party, trying to get into the Communist Party where possible, but at the very least offering a united front, a non-sectarian approach. You know what happened after 1977? And the trade unions began to lose members. The Communist Party, every year after 1977, lost between 80 and 100,000 members every year. Where did they go? They went home, not to the sects. They were demoralized. History would have been very different if there had been a Marxist tendency built up in the 50s and 60s to intervene in this process. Now, one of the lessons I think which really has to be brought home is that process initial early stage of radicalization that took place in 68, 69. All the symptoms are there that that is about to be repeated. In Italy, you have, you have that mood in the factories. Let's not repeat the mistakes of the past. We must be at the right place at the right time. We must be able to intercept this layer win them to Marxism, educate them, and turn them to the mass organizations. That's the lesson of history. Therefore, you see how much more, um, it's, it's, not, it's not a straightforward linear process. For every comrade we win today and educate, in a, in a situation like the one which is about to open up, like what we saw in Italy 68, 69, that little group of 100 of Anguardia Operaia became a group of 8,000 with the wrong orientation, wrong methods. Imagine with the correct methods. I think that's the lesson, and we really have to take it on board and educate the cadres, because one educated cadre today can lead a factory tomorrow. 
can win 10, 100 people tomorrow and build a massive tendency in the, in the events which are about to unfold. 